Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. Now today I'm gonna to tell you how you can play the violin with a metronome, how you can use a metronome and how you can get the best out of using a metronome. So first things first, you're gonna need a metronome of some sort. Now I've got two types here. It, it, it really doesn't matter what you've got, just as long as you've got something. So this is more of a digital um, kind of metronome that we've got here. This is, you wouldn't be able to buy this, this this is very old. Um, now this has got a dial that you turn here and you can have little clicks like this. It also flashes red as well. So if you've got one of those, you can see the flash there. If you've got one of those, that's great because you can sort of see something flashing out the corner of your eye. This one also actually has an A. If I turn the dial to the bottom, I'm gonna move it back a bit because it's gonna be a bit loud. This will give me an A as in my, my A string, so it's gonna help me tune. So I can listen to that A and then I can use it to, to tune my violin if I want to. And then off of there, I can use it to, I can use that A, just the A, to tune the rest of my strings. So, I mean, you know, obviously you don't need that. I'm just showing you this. This is what I've just got on, on my metronome. So you can have one of these. The second type that you can get is one of these traditional ones, um, which is sort of one of these. So you wind them up. There's no, this one, I should mention, obviously you need batteries in. This one is just a wind up one. This, this is very, very old. Uh, I've just wound it up. And it just gives me one of those. And what you would do is just move this, move the weight up and down. When it's at the top, it's... Obviously, it's quite slow. Down here, it's very fast. So I'll, I'll admit, if I'm, uh, if I'm working with a metronome um, with my violin, I don't really use this so much. Um, it's it's not quite as accurate as it used to be. This is so, so old now. So it is, I, I do feel it's not quite as accurate. I mean, it's fine, it's good enough. It's not going to, you know, it's not gonna interfere with my, my sense of rhythm. But just for me personally, I, I don't, I'm just being honest, I don't use that. I tend to use this one just because it's easier to slip into the drawer. I can put it in my violin case, doesn't take up much room. I can't really, this is quite big and bulky, isn't it? I can't really do much with this. Um, and like I said, it's not quite as accurate as it once was, only because it's 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 many, 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 many years old now. But it's one of those nice kind of mahogany ones. These are quite expensive to buy. I want to say there's something like, you know, you'd be looking at $100, maybe over $100, $100, pounds, that kind of thing. But whatever you choose to get, it doesn't really matter as long as you get a decent enough metronome that you can physically hear. So... Get yourself a metronome. And then the next thing you're gonna do is pick your music. So I'm gonna pick a piece from my songbook one. This is what you would move on to after you've done the first 10 lessons in my one to 30 violin course. And at the back on page 13, there's Drunken Sailor. Now I've chosen this one because Drunken Sailor is one of those pieces that is supposed to be played fast. <laughs> So this is one of those pieces that you would need to start slow and then work up to. So what I'm gonna do is, I've picked the music, now I'm gonna put the tempo on quite slowly and I'm gonna start playing it. So obviously I'm assuming that you've got a piece of music that you can actually play and you wanna work on it to get the speed up a little bit or you just want to improve your sense of rhythm. So I'm gonna put this dial at, I'm gonna put it at 72. So you can put it anywhere between 60 and 72. I'm just gonna put it on 72 and hope that you can hear it. Okay, now there are some places where I can't always hear the beeps and that is where the light comes in for me. Now, if I was using this one and I couldn't always hear the clicks and I could physically see it ticking from left to right. So that's why I do think it's important that you've either got something um, analog, so to speak, or wind up that is kind of moving so you can physically see the beep moving with your eye 
or you can see the light flashing on or off. It doesn't really matter, but the light just gives me a visual representative of how fast it's going. Okay, so once you've done that and you will want to, you'll want to play at a slow speed. So it depends, it depends how that's going at, at 70 beats. If you're finding that you're still struggling to play at 70, put it down to 60. You know, and play at 60, but that speed is A, going to give your, your brain time to think about what you're doing. It's just going to give you, you know, it's, it's just going to give you plenty of time to think about each beat and just to make sure that you are playing in tune as well. So don't forget, this isn't just necessarily about speed, taking something from very slow to very fast. You want to work on your intonation. So it's a very good opportunity to make sure that you are putting your finger down where you need to. If you're doing it fast, you know, everything is just a mess. Your bow is all over the place. Your fingers are not, because your brain is not working as quick as the fingers and the fingers are working too slow. The, nothing is talking together because they're both going at different paces. When you're slow, there's plenty of time for your brain to think, right, uh, down bow, up bow, down bow, up bow, third finger, third finger, third finger, second finger stretched, first finger back, second finger back, third finger. All those things that you have to process when playing the violin, that speed lets you do that. So what you would then do is gradually increase the tempo. So, you know, depending on the increments of your, um, your metronome will depend on that. So I would then move my 72 up to, I can move it up to 76 or I can move it up to 80. I'm just gonna move it up to 80 just for the purpose of this video, but I would move it a lot slower. I'd maybe move it four or five. Two might be a bit draggy and unnecessary, but maybe move it four or five, depending on what increments you can do. So now I'm going to move it up to 88. So on and so on. Then I'm going to move it up to 96. Again, I am just missing out a few beats here for the purpose of this video, but don't, don't go as high as me. But now you can hear it's getting faster. So each time you are going faster, you need to make sure that you are keeping in time with it. There's no point increasing that metronome if your playing is just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. If that's the case, go back a couple, go back some. Do not increase your time or do not increase your speed until you can play the current speed perfectly without any glitches, out any mistakes, out any faffing around, any extra like panic, time because you're, you're trying to think it's going too fast if that's the case you've got to slow it down and you've got to keep it at that speed until it's absolutely perfect now i'm not saying that this is all going to happen in one session it might take you to play at the speed of 70 you know it might take you a good week to actually be able to play this piece start to finish at the speed of 70 and if that takes you a week that takes you a week. If you can't nail it at 70, do not move it one beat past 70. So number four, practice with a metronome every day. Try playing with a piano for variety. So if you've got a backing track or you know a piano backing track, something like that, that can help. But a metronome is gonna give you a good sense of rhythm. It's gonna help you with your intonation. It's gonna help you do a lot of other things other than just increasing the speed of a piece. Metronomes are discipline boxes there it's like a discipline all trapped into one little tiny box or you know that someone stuffed discipline into here so this is what it's teaching you not just speed discipline and music is all about discipline without discipline we cannot play anything so I hope that has helped you in how to use a metronome. I know it's for a very sort of quick video, um, but there isn't really an awful lot um, to playing with a metronome. You just, 
simply put the metronome on and play to it. As far as matching the beats to what you're playing, it doesn't really matter. You, you know, when 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 you when you hum a song in your head, you're always tapping your foot to it or you know clicking a beat, and that beat represents your metronome. You don't have to worry about whether your piece of music has three beats in the bar, four beats in the bar, five, six. It doesn't really matter. You're just looking for a beat. That's why metronomes just simply tick. That's it. Metronomes don't really do anything other than that. Now I know a lot of you have probably apps on your phone. I don't really have an app for this reason but you can get metronomes on your phone and they can get a little, I think they're overcomplicated in some of them are sort of uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So they'll give you a stronger beep um, for the first, representing the first beat of the bar. And that's when people get a bit confused because then they're trying to, they're, they're trying to fit a piece of music in with a metronome while trying to get the metronome beating at the first beat of the bar and all of this and what do you set it to what just you're overthinking it don't overcomplicate it just stick the metronome just stick the metronome on and start playing i would start your metronome at 60 60 is a very good place to start I'll warn you though, 60 is very laboriously and very boringly slow, but if you can't play something at 60, you cannot play it at 70. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to see more like this, put some suggestions underneath this video and I will have a look and see what I can do. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on my next one. Bye.